Interrogation is interviewing as commonly employed by law enforcement officers, military personnel, intelligence agencies, organized crime syndicates, and terrorist organizations with the goal of eliciting useful information, particularly information related to suspected crime. Interrogation may involve a diverse array of techniques, ranging from developing a rapport with the subject to torture. Deception can form an important part of effective interrogation. In the United States, there is no law or regulation that forbids the interrogator from lying about the strength of their case, from making misleading statements or from implying that the interviewee has already been implicated in the crime by someone else. See case law on trickery and deception. As noted above, traditionally the issue of deception is considered from the perspective of the interrogator, engaging in deception towards the individual being interrogated. Recently, work completed regarding effective interview methods used to gather information from individuals who score in the medium to high range on measures of psychopathology and are engaged in deception directed towards the interrogator have appeared in the literature. The major aim of this technique is to investigate to what extent verbal and non-verbal features of liars and truth-tellers' behavior change during the course of repeated interrogations. It has shown that liars display significantly fewer smiles, self-manipulations, pauses, and less gaze aversion than truth-tellers, according to Granhag and Strovel. There are three approaches to non-verbal deceptive behavior. The first is the emotional approach, which suggests that liars will alter their behaviors based on their own emotional feelings. For example, if a subject is lying and they begin to experience guilt, they will shift their gaze. The second approach is the cognitive approach, which suggests that lying requires more thought than telling the truth, which in turn, may result in a liar making more errors in speech. Lastly, the attempted control approach suggests a subject who is lying will attempt to be seemingly normal or honest and will try to adjust their behaviors to make themselves believable. Good cop, bad cop is a psychological tactic used in negotiation and interrogation in which a team of two interrogators who take apparently opposing approaches to the subject one of whom adopts a hostile or accusatory demeanor, emphasizing threats of punishment, while the other adopts a more sympathetic demeanor, emphasizing reward, in order to convince the subject to cooperate. The use of drugs in interrogation is both ineffective and illegal. The body of principles for the protection of all persons under any form of detention or imprisonment forbids methods of interrogation which impair the capacity of decision of judgment. Furthermore, the World Medical Association and American Medical Association, for example, both forbid participation by physicians in interrogations. The history of the state use of torture in interrogations extends over more than 2,000 years in Europe. It was recognized early on that information extracted under duress was deceptive and untrustworthy. The Roman imperial jurist Ulpian in the 3rd century AD remarked that there is no means of obtaining the truth, from those who have the strength to resist, while those unable to withstand the pain, will tell any lie rather than suffer it. The use of, torture as an investigative technique waned with the rise of Christianity since it was considered, antithetical to Christ's teachings, and in 866 Pope Nicholas I banned the practice. But after the 13th century many European states such as Germany, France, Portugal, Italy, and Spain began to return to physical abuse for religious inquisition and for secular investigations. By the 18th century the spreading influence of the Enlightenment led European nations to abandon officially state-sanctioned interrogation by torture. By 1874 Victor Hugo could plausibly claim that torture has ceased to exist, yet in the 20th century authoritarian states such as Mussolini's fascist Italy, Hitler's Third Reich, and Lenin's and Stalin's Soviet Union once again resumed the practice, and on a massive scale. During the Cold War, the American Central Intelligence Agency was a significant influence among world powers regarding torture techniques in its support of anti-communist regimes. The Kiar adopted methods such as waterboarding, sleep deprivation, and the use of electric shock, which were used by the Gestapo, KGB, and North Koreans from their involvement in the Korean War.
The Kia also researched no-touch torture, involving sensory deprivation, self-inflicted pain, and psychological stress. The Kia taught its refined techniques of torture through police and military training to American-supported regimes in the Middle East, in Southeast Asia during the Bloody Phoenix program, and throughout Latin America during Operation Co.